Hi, everybody. I'm Georgiana Irvine from San Diego Zoo, and I am so thrilled to be here. I'm, I thank you to the Coronado Library System for inviting me. And I'm going to read a special book today published by San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance Press. It's called Fabulous Floyd, The True Story of a Flamingo Who Never Gave Up. And I've written a lot of these hope and inspiration books. They're all stories about real zoo and safari park animals. And this is one of my favorite stories. So here we go. Here's the cover. The title page of Fabulous Floyd. All right, here we go. It started with an egg. Floyd is the friendliest flamingo at the San Diego Zoo. His life began in an egg laid by his mother on a tall mud nest. You can kind of see the nest and I will show you better pictures later on a flamingo nest. <clears throat> and we have a fact here. Flamingos live in lagoons, mangrove swamps and large shallow lakes. They can live in salt or fresh water. Even before, even before he hatched, caregivers knew Floyd's life would be different. He was destined to have a special job at the zoo. When Floyd grew up, he would join a flock of friendly flamingos that had been trained to like people. These flamingos, called animal ambassadors, let people meet and feed them while animal caregivers explain why flamingos are so amazing. And you can see these different zoo visitors feeding the flamingos out of a cup. And what is in the cup? Dry protein biscuits, which are kind of like dog kibble. And we mix it in water and the flamingos love it. It's a very, very special treat. So when you're feeding them, you can't really touch them, but they get, you can see how close they get to our guests who are feeding them. Hatched. Floyd's egg was taken to the zoo's bird care center where it was placed in an incubator to keep it warm. Every day, caregivers held the egg up to a light to see how much Floyd had grown. It, this is called candling an egg and you can see right here how they're holding the egg up to a light and the light shows what's inside of the egg and Floyd's egg was candled every day until he hatched. After 30 days, Floyd hatched by breaking through his thick eggshell with his beak. He looked like a little gray fuzzball with legs. A few other flamingo chicks hatched at the same time as Floyd. So the caregivers painted a different colored spot on each chick to tell them apart. Floyd's spot was green. You can kind of see, I'll put that closer, the green on the back of Floyd's fuzz. And the, the colors don't hurt them at all. It's a non-toxic thing. And once they start getting their feathers, they lose the green and the other colors. Animal behavior specialists who were in charge of the friendly flamingos took the chicks on daily walks to exercise them. This also helped the chicks bond with people. After a walk, the caregivers sat on the ground with the baby flamingos. Floyd was special and different from the very start. He always climbed into someone's lap and snuggled up to that person. If the other chicks were blocking his way into a lap, he pushed them away. That's how much he liked sitting in people's laps. They liked people, but not as much as Floyd did. And when the chicks heard their caregivers' voices, they came running because they liked being with them. So you can see that we were really teaching these special flamingo chicks to like people. Introducing Floyd. When Floyd was three months old, he and the other chicks were introduced to the flock of grown-up friendly flamingos at the zoo. At first, the adult flamingos didn't pay much attention to the young birds, but soon they were buddies. As Floyd grew taller, he began having trouble standing up straight which concerned his caregivers. Floyd, flamingos need to have two strong, sturdy legs to survive. They must be able to walk with their flock and wade in the water to eat. They also need to be able to stand on one leg 
like you see in this picture, so they can rest the other leg. Two left feet. The caregivers noticed that something was wrong with Floyd's right leg. It was crooked and his right foot pointed in the same direction as the left one. It looked like Floyd had two left feet. The zoo veterinarians examined Floyd. They wrapped his right leg with a stretchy elastic tape to try to make it grow straighter and stronger, but that didn't help. Next, they put a simple brace on his leg, which didn't help either. Floyd needed surgery to fix his crooked leg. This worried Floyd's caregivers because flamingo legs are fragile and surgery on them isn't always successful but there were no other options. And you can see the veterinarian taking a close-up look at Floyd's leg right here. Floyd's surgery. The morning of the surgery, Floyd snuggled into the lap of a caregiver while they were driven to the zoo hospital in a small truck. At the hospital, Floyd was given medicine to make him go to sleep. A clear mask, you see that mask right there? A clear mask was put over Floyd's beak to help him breathe and stay asleep during the operation. The caregivers were relieved when the surgery was over. Now Floyd needed extra special care while his leg healed. It was hard for Floyd to only stand on his good leg, so his caregivers stayed with him all day and night to help hold him up. And even though Floyd's leg was sore, he loved the attention of his human friends. So you can see how they're holding him right here. But then after the surgery, Floyd's foot unexpectedly began to swell. His caregivers waded into a small pool with him so he could soak his foot in water to help it heal. His leg bandage was always wrapped in a plastic bag. It wasn't supposed to get wet. As Floyd got stronger, his caregivers filled the pool with more water to make it deeper. That way, Floyd could easily dunk his head as well as wash and preen his feathers, which are everyday flamingo behavior. So here you can see Floyd in the pool with the water. The caregivers were overjoyed when Floyd's right leg and his foot finally healed. Now he was able to join the other flamingos again. And they could tell that he was glad to be back with the flock because he honked, stopped, stomped around and flapped his wings. If you've ever been to the zoo, I bet you've probably heard the flamingos honking at times. They make really pretty funny sounds. Soon after rejoining the flock, the caregivers received bad news from the veterinarians. Floyd also needed surgery on his left leg because it had grown crooked too. Veterinarians took a CT scan of Floyd's leg, which is a series of x-ray photos that can be viewed on a computer. The pictures, here you can see some of the photos. The pictures help the veterinarians decide the best way to fix his other leg. During the operation, they straightened the bone and put pins in it. The pins were attached to a round metal frame called a fixator on the outside of Floyd's leg to hold the bone in place while it healed. And here you can see, the hi there. Ah, it was nice to hear you say hello. Here you can see where we have the fixator on Floyd's leg holding the bone in place. The surgery went well, but the veterinarians and caregivers knew the biggest challenge was still ahead. Floyd's recovery would take even longer this time. Keeping Floyd's spirit up was important because his leg would be very sore. He would also be away from the flamingo flock for many, many weeks. To help Floyd feel more at home in the zoo hospital, the caregivers added potted plants, his favorite feeding dish, and a mirror to the recovery room. The mirror made it look like there was more than one flamingo in the room so Floyd wouldn't be lonely. He didn't quite know that that other flamingo in the mirror was himself. Caring for Floyd. Floyd's devoted caregivers did whatever it took to help him heal. For the first week and a half, they cared for him around the clock. Floyd was most comfortable when he wasn't standing on either leg, so the caregivers 
held him on their laps at all times. They knew that Floyd was special because none of the other flamingos in the zoo wanted to be held like that. And they were very surprised to learn something while they were holding Floyd on their lap. And this is probably my favorite flamingo fact of all. We learned that Floyd dreamed and he snored while they were holding him on their laps. Who knew that flamingos dreamed and snored? And when he was dreaming, his eyes and his legs twitched. Do you know how you've got dogs and cats and they dream and their eyes and their legs twitch? That's exactly what Floyd did. And his snores sounded like soft honks. I actually saw a video of Floyd snoring. It was kind of, I'm not the best flamingo snore, but it kind of sounded like, uh, 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 kind of, you know, I'm not so good at honking like flamingos, but that is what, it, that's what a snore sounded like. So Floyd was wrapped in a yellow towel to keep him warm and to keep the caregiver's uniforms clean, because you never know, he might poop while they're holding him so that towel help keep them clean and him clean. He tucked his beak under his caregiver's arm so he would feel secure, just like he would tuck his beak under his wing if he were standing on his own. You can see him tucking his beak under the arm. Everyone who met Floyd grew attached to him and wanted to help him get better. Whenever Floyd's bandage was changed, the caregivers and the veterinary staff decorated the new bandage with different designs. Look at all these designs. What I learned is that there was a bit of a competition. Everyone wanted to have the prettiest bandage of all for Floyd. So they were very, very creative in the bandages that they created. This one has a lightning bolt, I think in honor of when San Diego's Chargers were still here playing football. I think this is my favorite though, though the one of Floyd with a heart on it because everybody loved him so much. As Floyd's leg healed, he started standing for short periods of time by using a sling, you can see that, to hold his body up. That's when a special visitor arrived. Divine, a young female flamingo from his flock, was brought to the hospital to keep him company. And Divine was the perfect roommate because she was sweet and easy to get along with. Even though Floyd's recovery was challenging, the caregivers could tell that he wanted to get better. He made progress every day, standing for longer and longer periods of time without being held by them or being supported by a sling. And here you can see him standing. And this time he has a purple bandage on his leg. Back to the flock. The day Floyd took his first few steps on his own, the caregivers cried because they were so happy and relieved. No one had been sure he would ever walk again. Before, before Floyd could be reunited with the flamingo flock, he had to walk on his own all the time. He needed good balance too. The caregivers didn't want him to be knocked over by the other flamingos who could be a bit pushy. Floyd started visiting his flamingo flock several hours a day. At first, he watched them from over a fence. He also practiced walking in a grassy area near the Flamingo Lagoon. And each day, Floyd's leg grew stronger and stronger. Finally, a month after Floyd's second surgery, his left leg was strong enough for him to rejoin his Flamingo friends once more. Floyd had been through a lot, yet he never gave up his fight to get better. When Floyd was reunited with the other flamingos, he strolled over to them, flapped his wings, and honked. Floyd was home again, ready to take on his job as an animal ambassador. As the friendliest flamingo in the flock, fabulous Floyd soon became one of the most popular animals in the entire San Diego Zoo. He continues to greet people every day, and he still likes a snuggle from his caregivers every once in a while. And there is Floyd running back to his flock. And that's the end of the story. However, I would like to share 
a few behind the scenes stories about the making of the Floyd book with you. And then I would also like to share some flamingo facts with you. So I am going to share my screen. And here we go. Let me share it. And I hope. Yep. Can right everybody, right. can you see it? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to give you some fun facts about flamingos. But first, I want to tell you this little story. So in the Floyd Flamingo book, on the end papers, there are Floyd's footprints. And I'd like to show you how we were able to get those footprints. So these are his real footprints. So as you know from the story, Floyd loves to be held by his caregivers. You look at, and look at how much they love holding him too. So what we did is the caregivers held Floyd and we used non-toxic paint to paint his beautiful foot and he didn't mind it as all. As long as he was being held, he was fine having his foot painted. And then we had a piece of canvas and we would press his foot onto the canvas. Here's a close-up shot of how we got the flamingo footprints. And then of course we would wash his foot off in a tub of water Again, the paint was non-toxic, but we still wanted to make sure we got his foot clean. And there you go. There are the caregivers holding up the Floyd footprints that we use in the book. And with all of our Hope and Inspiration books, we try to get handprints or footprints or paw prints of the various animals. And so far, so good. And now I'd like to share a few flamingo facts with you. So the flamingos you see at the San Diego Zoo are called American flamingos. Amazingly though, flamingos don't only live in the Americas like South America and the Caribbean. They also live in Africa and they live in Asia. So if you look at the map, if you look at the red where it says South American Caribbean, and then you look down at the flamingo pictures, those are the flamingo species, Andean, American, Chilean, and Puna, that live uh, in the Americas. And American flamingos are also sometimes called Caribbean flamingos. You might know that name a little bit more. And then in Africa and India, you have the Chilean, or excuse me, you have the lesser and the greater flamingos. And if you look closely at the photos, you'll see that they actually look quite different, particularly the lesser flamingo and the American flamingo. And flamingos are very, very social birds. They live in flocks of varying sizes that can range from a few pairs of flamingos to thousands of birds in one colony. So here you see American flamingos and you can see there are a lot more than a few pairs of birds. And then these are lesser flamingos from Africa. And again, they live in a huge flock. But I just look closely at the difference, how the Caribbean American flamingos are more of a salmony orangey color. And then the lesser flamingos are a lighter pink and they also have like a red eye, which I think is really beautiful. So this is a photo of Lake Nakuru in East Africa. And Lake Nakuru is home to lesser and greater flamingos. Look at how many flamingos there are there. I have been to Lake Nakuru and I'm about to show you a very old photo of me at Lake Nakuru. But when I was there, there were one and a half million flamingos there at the time. That's a lot of flamingos. So here I am, that was taken a long time ago, but I want you to note that I actually am wearing a flamingo shirt. When I visited the flamingos at Lake Nakuru, I made it a point to wear my flamingo shirt, shirt there. So like I said, that was taken many, many years ago, but at the time there were a, you know, a million and a half flamingos there. And what's really cool about Lake Nakuru is there are other animals that live in the area. I mean, you do have leopards, you do have giraffes, but in this picture I thought I'd share, you could see some zebras that are along the edge of the lake and the flamingos don't mind. I suppose if there were a leopard or a lion, 
at the edge of the lake, they might be a little bit more nervous because they could become food for those animals, but not zebras. Zebras graze and eat water plants. And I'm sure most of you, unless you've seen flamingos in their natural habitat, have never seen them fly. And you might not even know that they do fly, but look at this, flamingos fly. But what's interesting to me about them flying is before they can take off, before they can lift off, they have to run a few steps. So in the top photo, you can see them running and that's shallow water, but you can see them running. And then look at the bottom photo, you can see they're starting to lift, their wings are giving their, them lift and they're starting to lift off the lake. And then here you can see that they are airborne. So you've got the various steps, they have to run and then flap their wings and then they lift up and they're finally flying. Like I said, a lot of people don't realize that flamingos are really good flyers. I know they look awkward, but, but they are good flyers and they can fly really high. So as I mentioned earlier in the book, flamingos lay eggs and they only lay one egg at a time on a nest that's made of mud. And this is one of the nests at the San Diego Zoo. Um, right now, if you go to the zoo now, we have some chicks and you still might see some of the mud nests up at the lagoon at the front of the zoo. And in the wild, these are uh, American flamingos. And I think this is on a Caribbean island, I'm not sure. But you can see they also have mud nests. It's a little bit darker color of mud, but they are all sitting on mud nests. And at the zoo, you'll see that our flamingo nests are all together too on a, on a little island. What's extra special is that the male and female flamingos, the parents, both incubate the eggs. They take turns sitting on the eggs. And what's really nice is both parents also take care of the chicks. There aren't a lot of bird species where that happens, um, where the parents share the duties, but this is one of the situations where both flamingo parents share the duties. And the flamingos are together as a pair for life in many instances. And we have had some flamingos at the zoo where the female was pretty old, 55 years old. That's pretty old for a bird. And she lost her younger male mate. So then her new mate was a younger male. So you had an older female with a younger male and they were both taking care of the chicks, which is pretty cool. But this I especially love. Flamingo chicks sometimes have babysitters and they'll hang out together. These, these are all, all the little gray birds are flamingo chicks. They're a little bit older than the chicks you just saw they hang out together in a group called a creche. And then a couple of the adults actually babysit them. And that gives the flamingos parents a break. And so it's a very normal thing, especially in big wild flamingo flocks for you to see the babies all grouped together and two or three or four adults babysitting them. But then you might wonder, okay, all of these flamingo chicks, how do the parents find their baby out of this whole big group of baby flamingos? Well, flamingos communicate as I, one of the ways they communicate is by honking, which I mentioned to you, and they squeak and they growl and they grunt. But each flamingo chick has its own voice, its own sounds that the parents can recognize. So when the chicks are in that big group of flamingo chicks, their parents can actually hear their own chicks sounds and come and get their chick and take it back to the nest. That's pretty remarkable to me. And you know how loud flamingos are. They're always squawking and they can be very loud, but the parents can find their chick by the chick's voice, which is, is pretty remarkable to me. And my other favorite flamingo fact is, you see that flamingo? A lot of people think that what you're looking at are the flamingo knees. And I put knees on there 
But those are not the flamingo's knees. Those are the flamingo's ankles. Isn't that amazing? I put the knees there to trick you. The knees are actually up under the feathers, kind of by the body. So if you, so I probably shouldn't have put knees on, but I wanted to kind of do a trick question for you. So what those arrows are pointing at are actually the flamingo's ankles. And I know you look at your ankles and they're very close to your feet. Well, the flamingo ankles are much further away from the feet. And those are all of my flamingo facts. And I wanted to let you know that if you want to learn more about flamingos and other animals, you can go to San Diego Zookids.org, which is our website, and it says Save Animals. And if you would like to know more about our Hope and Inspiration books, you can go to shopzoo.com and you can also find and look at our little plush flamingos on Shop Zoo. And finally, I see your hand raised, but we'll get to you in one minute. Yeah, I've got one more thing to show you. It's just something so you can mark your calendars. On July 8th at 11 a.m., my friend and fellow author, Carrie Hassler, will be reading A Wish for Pangolin for you. And it's one of my very, very favorite illustrated books. So I'm excited for you to be able to tune in again on July 8th and learn all about pangolins. So I'm stopping my share and can answer, I'll do my best to answer questions that you have. Lundell kids, do you guys wanna go ahead since you had your hand raised? Um, did you know in the Bay, there is a uh, flamingo that lives there is, that's also named Floyd? Yeah. Does it still live there? I had heard that. That is really exciting. Have you, I've never seen it. I think I need a trip to the bay to go see that Floyd flamingo. That's pretty cool. I'm guessing it's probably an American flamingo. I just, I kind of wonder where it came from. I know it didn't escape from the zoo, but thank you for sharing that. I've got to go see that. That sounds exciting. Do you guys have another question? I see another hand raised there. Go ahead. Uh, uh, flaming, flamingo's nests are called mud, uh, mud volcanoes. You know, they look exactly like a mud volcano. I have never heard them called that, but I am happy to know that. I'm going to have to share that with my zoo friends because they really do. They absolutely look like volcanoes because there's like a crater in the center of them. You must, you really know your flamingos. I am very impressed. Does anyone there, else have any questions for Ms. Georgian? You can either type them into the chat or you can unmute and say them now. Well, I have a question for you. Um, so it seems like, you know, we have those especially friendly flamingos as their bird ambassadors. Do you know if the zoo has other bird ambassadors? Yes, we do have other bird ambassadors. If you visit, and, and actually the zoo on the 15th of June, we are opening up again and you'll be able to see our animal presentations and all. So we have birds such as macaws, which are big parrots that are animal ambassadors. We have, oh, one of my favorite animal ambassadors is a kookaburra, which is a bird from Australia that laughs. And our kookaburra knows how to laugh on cue. Oh. Secret to making the kookaburra laugh is you trill, you go, and then he laughs. Isn't oh. that amazing? He has been trained to do that. Um, and we've got some cockatoos who are animal ambassadors and some owls who are animal, animal ambassadors. And they really help us educate people about the importance of birds. And at the safari park, if you go to the park, we have a whole presentation that should be starting up in a few weeks that's all bird ambassador stars. What, so one ambassador that I love is called a crown crane. And a crown crane is a big tall bird from Africa. It looks like it's got hair that sticks up straight, but it's really feathers and it looks like a crown. 
And we also have crown cranes living in our East Africa habitat. And the next time you watch The Wizard of Oz, which I hope all of you kids have watched that movie, but there's a scene in the movie with the Tin Woodsman. And if you look very closely, you will see a crowned crane in that scene, a real crowned crane in that scene. There are actually a lot of live birds in The Wizard of Oz. There are no flamingos in The Wizard of Oz, but you can see a crowned crane and a toucan and a crow. And then there's another type of crane. I'm not sure of the species. Awesome, thank you. We have some more questions. Go ahead, guys. You can unmute. I, uh, I have a question. Is a crown queen from Japan? What was that? I didn't quite understand. Uh, crown queen, is it from Japan? Oh, is the crown crane from Japan? No, these crown cranes are from Africa. I, I know they have some cranes, they've got, oh, you know what you're thinking of? They have red crown cranes in Asia that look very different, but it looks like they've got a red splotch of, of feathers on their head. So this is an East African crown crane that looks a little bit different, but yes, they do have red crown cranes in Asia. And uh, you'll see red crown cranes in a lot of Japanese and Chinese art. They're beautiful, beautiful animals. Lundell's kids, did you have another question? Um, uh, in the Wizard of Oz, when you see the crows, it's when uh, the evil wizard, evil. Uh, oh, the witch. Yeah, the evil witch. There are some crows, and then you see some crows with the scarecrow as well. Yeah, the scarecrow is scaring the crows. The, crows. the flying monkeys are not real, <laughs> and I'm teasing you. I know you. Those are those are people who pretend to be the flying monkeys, but it is really interesting that they did use many real birds when filming The Wizard of Oz. That's actually, it's an old movie, but it is still one of my very, very favorite movies. I would like to mention one other thing about birds. A lot of people say, oh, I don't, I like mammals because birds don't have any personality. And on that trip to Africa where I visited the flamingos, I got a new appreciation of birds and turned into a huge bird fan because they're beautiful, they're smart, they do have interesting personalities as you can see by the Floyd the Flamingo book. And we've got a lot of really beautiful birds that live in San Diego County. And I have bird feeders and I have hummingbirds and um, hooded Oreos, which are those bright yellow and black birds that come during the summer. And we've got crows or hawks and owls. And so anyway, I, I'd like you all to really, when you're outside, pay close attention to the birds in your neighborhood because they are really special and they're really, really interesting. And it took me a while to learn how interesting birds are, but I did and I love them and I love watching the birds that live near my home. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Oh, do we have one more question? Do you have time for one more, Mr. Sure, I've got time for one more. Okay. We're moving to Kenya. What, what was that? Have We're you been to Kenya? To Kenya. Say that again. We're moving to Kenya. Oh, you're oh. moving to Kenya? Oh my goodness. That is going to be really exciting. Are you moving to Nairobi or where are you moving? Nairobi. Well, you know what? Lake Nakuru is not, as I recall, it's not that far from uh, Nairobi. So if your parents are listening, tell them that once you get settled in, maybe they'll take you on a field trip, a special trip to Lake Nakuru so you can see the flamingos. That's really exciting news. I loved, I loved it when I visited Kenya. I've been there a couple times and um, I, I, it was just really very special to be able to go there and meet the wonderful people who live there and see the animals. So I'm excited for you. 
Well, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful story and all those beautiful flamingo facts. And we will be excited to um, have everyone back on July 8th to have another zoo story time. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. You were a wonderful audience. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you.